Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News or Trader Talk with Charlie Man Dan. How are you going, Dan? Good, how are you? Good, thanks, mate. Um, Bitcoin futures, it's the talk of the town. I know um, we've certainly both been looking up the specs and how this is all going to play out. And um, what are you sort of, what are your thoughts leading into this um, trading in the next couple of hours? Well, for me, what's really important is the action leading into events. And I was doing a, a video a few days ago, and I said, as we were making that run up to 19,000 on GDAX, I was saying, can we really keep this up for three more days? Because I had it in my mind that, you know, we're going to get extremely inflated, and then they're going to use that to short. But the way things have played out, we've already hit that climax, and then the market started pricing in this fear of these futures coming. So... In my opinion, the past three days of, of that, you know, 25, 30% pullback has significantly priced things in. And my outlook on what to anticipate would be completely different if we were just hitting, you know, 19,000 tonight rather than having just consolidated for three days. So I'm still bullish Bitcoin. This daily chart looks really nice. I'm looking at the, the GDAX chart and the lower wicks off of 14,000 three days in a row. This is very bullish consolidation at this point. I almost feel these futures tonight are going to be a non-event. And that's because the market priced things in. Yeah, and I think um, on social media, we see those stats about the time it took for Bitcoin to rise each $1,000 increment. And it's the same with the corrections. If we we're waiting for that correction after this run up, it's already happened. It happens in less than 24 hours. We've had a 30% pullback from 19,700 already. So as you said, I, I think this is gonna be another um, kind of non-event and, and during the middle of the week people will kind of be looking around saying oh this didn't really affect things um so do you want to talk about a little bit what futures are and do you want to dive into that or do you want me to touch on that sure well i mean just futures in general historically have been used as as hedges and just a, a basic example would be for farmers i enjoy farming myself but let's say you're a farmer and you have a giant field of potatoes and you want to lock in uh, prices because that's a huge risk if there's a, a drought or anything like that it can ruin your whole crop and then you're ruined as a farmer so there's got to be a way to hedge risk and with futures you can lock in a price and that hedges against that risk and it's actually an, an interesting take where i've been learning on it a lot more because we had a former member who has left the chart guys and he's starting his own uh futures market for the trucking industry so the trucking industry does not have a futures market right now. The shipping industry in the Baltic Sea does, but he's using blockchain technology, which is very interesting to follow this guy with his, you know, it's a multi-million dollar startup. And these future contracts are going to significantly reduce risk for these, these shippers and these truckers that are taking on this risk in terms of locking in futures prices. So it's a, it's a way to hedge against risk. And honestly, that has led me to believe in others that, the futures contracts are going to be a way that people that are bullish Bitcoin would probably go short. And what I mean by that is if you're holding, if you're, if you're a miner or you're a long-term investor and you're holding, you know, 10, 50, 100 Bitcoin, taking 10% of that position and going short with futures contracts is a really good way to hedge your risk because if Bitcoin keeps going up, you're going to lose on your 10% and you're going to make a lot of money on your 90%. And if Bitcoin goes down, you're going to lose on your 90%, but you'll still be making money on that 10%. So it's a way to balance things out. And I think it's going to end up reducing volatility a little bit uh, because of that fact. But I don't think that we're going to see the kind of reaction that I was anticipating. You know, if, if we're going to run up multiple days and, and five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 leading into this event, it's a completely different scenario, like I said, than what we have right now. Yeah, I, com I completely agree with that about in the farmer scenario, you know, producing potatoes, it's the farmers that want to hedge their risk. And in the Bitcoin world, it's the miners that are the producers of the Bitcoin that want to hedge their risk. Um, so the other thing I guess we should speak about is the fact that this is cash settled. So there's, it's not going to increase demand at all for Bitcoins with, you know, the basics of supply and demand. Unlike if we have an ETF, they'll be required to hold a large amount of, of Bitcoin, but futures, they're all cash um, settled. So again, this is interesting because who, who's going to be trading this? If you're going to be shorting this and the circuit breakers and the volatility, that's the next thing that I that I'm a little bit worried about. So 
If we look at the individual contracts, um, CBOE have said that they're going to have those 10% circuit breakers and then 20% and they'll shut down trading for the day. And CME is 7%, 13% and then they shut it down altogether at 20% as well. So that's what I worry about. If this is going to trade five days a week, um, what's going to happen over the weekend or intraday when these things are moving 10 or 20%? And, and how is this giving accurate price discovery if they've got to open up or down 20% on a Monday after a weekend move and trading, it's always going to be a day behind. And do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, it's definitely a very valid point. Even we're seeing that now just in terms of, you know, there's blockchain stocks out there, but um, GBTC is one way that people in the market have been trading Bitcoin. And if you're holding over the weekend, you have insane amounts of risk where it's going to be trading 48 hours at least with you unable to do anything as a trader your hands are literally tied and that is a situation that i never want to be in so it, it is going to be very interesting to see how these markets that are only going to be five days a week are going to be able to deal with this seven day a week uh phenomenon that you know 24 7 trading is not really something that we've seen in the stock market in terms of comparing it to but um it's yeah it's all very new and you know everybody has an opinion and opinions are a dime a dozen in this space so it's, it's so important to just wait and see how it plays out and to be cautious and protective, but to, to not give in to fear or any emotions. The chart's going to tell us if we're dumping or if we're bullish. And right now, the daily chart is telling me that everything's just fine in the world of Bitcoin. Yeah. Okay, so a few other things which you maybe mentioned, those margin requirements. So if you want to trade futures on oil, you only have to put up a tiny bit of capital because the you know oil or um, you know foreign exchange currencies they don't fluctuate very much so they'll let you leverage you know maybe up to 50, 50 times but in the what we've seen so far from the brokers um as they're sort of saying 35 percent margin requirements 44 percent for cboe td ameritrade have come out and said that they're gonna have 50 percent margin requirements i think interactive brokers so there's there's no way that the big boys can use a lot of leverage to push markets around i think the brokers are very aware that this is very risky stuff um, some brokers are not even allowing shorting because this can, can um, create a cascade. So if you've got an account and you're trading a lot of different futures, but then all of a sudden you get margin called for Bitcoin, you might have to sell some gold or some oil positions and other things to free up capital for these margin calls. And in the world that we live in where everyone's trading on big um, risk and big leverage, we don't want to start another financial crisis or a cascade of events because of Bitcoin has a 40% correction and everyone gets margin calls. So, any thoughts on that, Dan? Yeah, I mean, that would be a great way to ruin the reputation of Bitcoin, blame Bitcoin for a financial crisis. Um, I don't foresee that happening, but it is definitely, we've seen, you know, these, these brokers are not dumb and they know that this is very high risk. So they're going to be a little bit more protective. And that's what we're seeing with these margin requirements and uh, just the little differences that we're seeing. And the way that these are shaping up, CBOE is looking like it's gonna be more for retail traders just because the contract size that you're going to be required to purchase, one contract is one Bitcoin, whereas for CME, one contract is going to be five Bitcoin. That's for more the uh, institutional trader and a little bit more of a bigger fund. So uh, I'm going to be looking at, I think it's going to be, that's how it's going to be split up. And CBOE will be able to get a, a gauge of what retail is thinking. And then CME, obviously, they're going to be fairly similar to each other. But that will uh, we'll know that that's going to be institutional more so just because of the more capital it's going to be required to trade it. And just to touch on that, uh, for people that might not be familiar what a contract is with those cryptocurrencies, it means if you're buying one contract, you know, that's on one Bitcoin versus five Bitcoin, just like if you're trading options for stocks, you're buying one contract and it's worth, uh, you know, either 10 shares or 100 shares, depending. Normally it's it's 10 shares. So. Uh, it's, it's just a, a way to differentiate the two from each other, CBOE and CME, and who's going to be utilizing which. Yeah. Well, mate, I'll maybe finish with some thoughts on where the market's going. But personally, I think that it's not going to work at these low levels. As I said, those 10, 20 percent circuit breakers, I don't think futures function very well at these low prices. And that to me is, um, you know, I'm inclined to think that they're going to let Bitcoin run up towards 50,000 or even once Bitcoin's 100,000, um, these futures start to work a lot better and they can start to stabilize the price. Whereas if we're down at these levels, 10, 10K and Bitcoin's jumping up and down $1,000 and those circuit breakers are getting hit every day, I just, it's not a good product. It doesn't 
um, serve any purpose. So I actually think that the, the higher the Bitcoin price goes, the better it functions um, for these futures traders. Then we have that stability, then it leads to an ETF. So I'm certainly leaning towards this being a positive thing overall. Uh, yeah, I would definitely agree. And I think in the immediate short term, the positive impact will be people tonight. You know, everybody is saying like, you know, what's going to happen as soon as they go live, thinking that there's going to be, you know, the, the flip, the switch is going to flip and there's going to be some event. I don't think that's going to happen. And I think people are going to say, OK, well, nothing's happening. I want to get back in because the people that went cash to avoid this are going to be getting back in now. So I think uh, 14,000 holds on GDAX, we're fine on Bitcoin. Yeah, cool. All right, mate, I appreciate uh, picking your brain as always. So uh, happy trading and we'll talk again soon. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Cheers, mate.